What's up guys, Tender 64 here, and today, we are back with another tier list. As you can see, we are doing a tier list for the mainline Super Mario games. And by we, of course, I'm referring to myself and the boys, all three of them. I have Jordan Draws. Hey. I also have uh, Michael Game Show. Hello everyone, I am back again to do another tier list. This should be very interesting. And last but not least, I have Mr. Prism. Alright, so we're just going to uh, jump right into this. Basically, we're going to be ranking all of the mainline uh, Mario games here. Um, and as you can see already, this does not include uh, these games that are already here in uh, a separate tier. Um, that is for spin-offs and remakes. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that like to count Luigi U as a, re a spin-off. Um, I'm one of the other half that, like, don't count it. Because, like, even though, like, the story and the overworld and the graphics and everything in between are the same, the levels themselves are, like, vastly different. I mean, personally, I would still kind of count it as a spinoff, but we'll talk, we'll get into depth on that later when we get to it. At the very least, I, cons oh. I consider it more mainline than Yoshi's Island. Also, guys, just a little side note before we get started. Uh, when we get to games like Super Mario 64, we might reference a little bit of Super Mario 64 DS. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that, that's the other thing I was going to get to. Like, like these are in their own tier list, but we will address, like, certain aspects about, like, the games, of how, like, they're better in the All-Stars version or something like that, um, or uh, changes in the 64 DS version uh, when we get to them. So with that... We're going to start with the original, Super Mario Brothers, and and I will say right now, uh, for all the games, I'm going to try and, like, condense them down to, like, the main stuff about them, like, story, music, other things, um, and considering that Super Mario Bros. is the one that started it all, um, there's not much to say about it, because the story's very simple. Uh, Bowser has invaded the Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, turning all the toads and stuff into bl blocks and stuff. Um, and Peach is apparently the only one that can undo that spell, and uh, she got kidnapped. So the Mario Bros. are out to save her. Simple as that. Um, and I will say, concern, like, I had this on the Wii, Wii Virtual Console growing up. And, like, I there have been plenty, plenty of times where I've actually, like, grinded out this game, like... Because, like, like, I learned about the Warp Zone really early on, so, like, I just, like, started, like, uh, grinding the World 8 uh, much faster than I would've. Um, it wasn't until very recently that I actually, like, started doing the actual worlds themselves, like, beyond Worlds 1, 4, and 8. Um, and even despite that, like, it's not exactly my favorite in the Mario games. I'd say it's, like, middle of the pack, because, like, for the original game, the physics are fine. So, there are some parts where, like, the physics are wonky, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. And for the music case, a lot of those the, the songs are iconic. Personally, my favorite music is the underwater theme, and the overworld gets kind of repetitive for the game, but there's a lot of better versions of that theme. So I, I personally put this game in C tier. Okay, so as for me, um, as for the first ever Mario World, well, technically not the first, but the first of the eight series, um, it's just like average to me. Like, I have played on uh, multiple versions, like the the uh, Super, uh, Nintendo Switch Online, the original version, um, uh, the NES Classic. Like, I played it in a lot of different versions, but it's just whatever to me. Like, I think it is a game that everyone should play at least once in their lifetime, but it's it's just not going to, like, rank any of my top 10 of Mario games of all time. And yeah. it just gets repetitive, like, after a while, because it's only 13 levels, and that's literally it. Like, there's nothing you do. It's just four levels per for, for eight times. And then you just fight Bowser, like, over and over again, or technically fake Bowser, depending on mm, what. Yeah. But, yeah. It's just an alright game, but... But uh, I think, like I said, I think everyone should play it at least once. So it's going to C tier for me. Not much else to say. Um, I don't remember if I have played it before. I must have played it at least at some point. I just forgot. But I at least know enough about it to at least make a ranking. Is that 
I guess I'd say it's pretty accurate to what you guys say, is that, like, I mean, yes, it did start off an iconic franchise, but yes, I feel like at the same time, like, I could, like, specifically the physics, I feel like I definitely had a problem with, just because, like, it's so easy to fall, like, honestly, it's not really easy to get, it's not really easy to understand the physics pretty well. At the very least, the physics are not near as bad as they are in Mario Land, so, <laughs> but they are still bad. <laughs> That, that is true, that... Oh, sorry. Uh, I digress. But, um... I mean, when Michael said that it does, does get repetitive, I mean, I guess that is... That would be true, but I guess at the same time, at least the stages are changed up a little bit here and there, but... I guess that still doesn't really make it that much funner. Like... I'm trying to think, like, what can I base it off for? Like... I believe me, it's definitely better than Mario Run, absolutely, but, I don't know, I feel like I'd rather, but I would rather play Donkey Kong than play this, this again, personally, so. Oh, really? I mean, Damn, that is a but, hot take I was not expecting, I'm gonna be honest, that like, that's a hot take I respect, because, like, although, I can't really say much about that, because, like, I barely ever played the true, uh, uh, level 50 of Donkey Kong because I I played the NES version on the Wii Virtual Console and like That one does not have level 50. It cuts straight from 25 straight to 75 M But anyway, but, but yeah, but as I was saying though is that I feel like I go with the same rank with you guys I give it to you. All right, Prism. Yeah, I mean I kind of agree with what Jordan said I'd rather play Donkey Kong than Mario 1 just because I know it like single-handedly save the video game industry, but the whole game feels like an ice level. And <laughs> you're just always flipping around and can't make any of your jumps. I guess that's uh, I mean, really that's. Like, I'd put it D. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, like we said, very wonky physics. Uh, big physics for the first ever game ever of Mario franchise. So, mm -hmm. but it is one of the most important ones ever. Yeah. For sure, because it did save mm -hmm. uh, video games. Okay. Anyways. Moving on to Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, which is the original uh, second game in the series. Um, however, it was only released in Japan because of how freaking difficult it is. And I played this enough times because uh, for the past few summers, I've been doing marathons of all the mainline Mario games here. And like this one is the one that I do not look forward to ever because of... Well, A, it's difficult, and B, there's a lot, it's akin to Mario Maker, there's a lot of trolley blocks and stuff. Like, and like, first things first, the story's pretty much exactly the same as uh, the original Mario 1, as far as I can tell. Except there's also uh, five additional worlds. Um, one is a, like, a World 9 bonus level, um, and the other four are lettered worlds um, that... Uh, According to the, uh, for the, for Lost Levels here, the original one, you have to play the game eight times without continue to unlock those worlds. Um, and, frankly speaking, since, like, the only version I've really played of Lost Levels is the All-Stars version, which I'm assuming that's probably the B-roll footage I'm showing now, um, the All-Stars version definitely mitigates a lot of problems, um, namely, uh, the fact that when you game over, you just restart the level instead of going back to the beginning of a world. And also some parts of it, namely, like, the, um, I think World 8, because the background's actually, like, a background and not having stuff in the foreground, like the castle, uh, foreground elements. Um, it kind of, like, mitigates some of the problems, but, like, that doesn't really, like, help it much. And overall... My least favorite Mario game, it's freaking F tier. I don't like the Lost Levels. I don't need to even say... I don't even need to play the entire game just to know how bad this game is. Because this game is completely awful. You like, know what? Every... I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there. That, like, something I just also remembered adding to, like, the trolliness. Um, if you happen to, like... I, I'm not sure if it's, like, um, only when you jump over the flagpole and run past the castle... Um, uh, oh. but I know that there is, uh, warps that take you back worlds, if that wasn't yeah, already that's... truly enough, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I so okay, anyway, back to what I was saying, like, yeah, just every single level design in the game, well, is completely awful, except for the first level, I, I was about to say, aside for the first level, yeah, yeah, I find the first level is pretty easy, but after that, holy crap, just, 
what the hell, Nintendo? What were you thinking? I get it. You're, you're just, you want to make a sequel, but you have to make it really this difficult. You know what, actually? I think World 9 is, like, the only exception. Like, I think aside from, like, 9-3, all of the, the World 9 levels are, um, uh, relatively easy because of the fact that it's literally just swimming levels. And, you and like, all the... I don't think there's many swimming enemies, uh, in those levels. Um, I think it's just, like, the grounded enemies that are just in the water. And also, I know 9-4 is really, really short, because it's meant to just, like, have the, uh, the you are a super player message or thank you message or whatever, um, sp uh, written in Japanese, by the way. Um, of course. And other than that, like, aside from, like, the first level, maybe the second, maybe also the first level in World A, I'm not fully confident to say that, um, the rest of the game sucks in its level designs. Stupid, difficult, and trolling. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, as I was saying, let me finish what I was going to say about the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just all the level designs are awful. And even they somehow mess up with some of the char with the characters in the game. Well, mostly with Luigi because he, for some reason, he's just, like super slippery to control. Like, I get it. He, like, he's normally slippier to control, but holy crap, they made him ridiculously slippery in this game. But at least he can jump higher than uh, Mario. And, oh, yeah, and the poison mushroom. Like, it literally kills you. I mean, that makes sense, but still. How could I forget the poison mushroom? I'm stupid. Yeah. Uh, and for some reason, people have complained that uh, the, the poison mushroom actually looks the exactly the same as the original, so it's hard to difference. I mean, there's clearly the difference. Just look for the red. And if it's red, that means it's the normal mushroom. If it's, like, black, then it's the poison mushroom. But, uh, anyways, um... Uh, Oh yeah, then you forget to mention that you actually fight Bowser literally in the middle of the stage in, at some point in the game. I don't remember which world is that, but I know it's somewhere. I think it's world. I think it's both World Eight and uh, D. Uh, you have uh, the the quote unquote Bowser's brother. I think it's called. <laughs> oh my god, that's just you know, it's just so much fun to make fun of this game that it's honestly kind of fun. No, I still but hate it. anyway, for the wrong reasons. <laughs> Sonic 06. Uh, and, uh, that's all I really have to say about uh, Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to beat this game ever in my life. Maybe someday, but most likely never. Because I never want to play this game again. Well, I definitely don't look like anybody who's been to Japan to play this game. <laughs> so, yeah, I never played this game. But Even if there is access yeah. to it, but I don't think you want to endorse this. Oh, Believe me, there's definitely. Actually, there actually plenty of games that that I don't think I want to endorse, but even then, some of them I know, like, I might just do it for literally, because I just sometimes hate myself. Which, you might have just mentioned one of them, by the way, but, <clears throat> yep, I have not played it, so I can't really make a so I'll just move on. It's just a worse Mario one. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> In every aspect of that. the word. Although I, I I will say the only the one saving grace I can give to it, uh, uh, the ending theme, the Peach's Rescue theme, they actually like extended that, and like that version of the theme has like carried over to like almost all of the Mario games since. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> this game can go to hell for all I care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not looking forward to uh, playing it again in my next marathon next summer. <laughs> All right. Would it be surprised if that's the reason you cancel marathon? <laughs> <laughs> no, it has never been a reason I cancel my marathons. I'm always like including that in in my marathons. <clears throat> Although, grants, I'm, I'm only playing the All Stars version of the original four, but I digress. Uh, okay, anyway, okay. we're moving on to Super Mario Brothers Two, uh, or as it's called in, in Japan, Super Mario USA, which. Uh, do I even need to mention the fact that this is a reskin of Doki Doki Panic? <laughs> I yes. think I do care about that, actually. <laughs> I will say, it's not like a complete reskin, though, because, like, in comparison to that, to, uh, Doki Doki Panic, there have been, like, a lot of, like, quality of life improvements. Um, I've, I've heard, I've learned that, uh, there is no run button in, uh, Doki Doki Panic, so that makes, like, platforming a lot <laughs> difficult in that one. Um, uh, 
but also like um um there have been like a lot of like uh major improvements like um namely one that i can think of off the top of my head is that they added claw grip like claw grip as an actual like new character for mario 2 that was not present in doki um and for what it's worth and like for, for like the story case like it's that Mario's asleep, uh, he finds a cave, and and then after, like, the whole dream stuff, he wakes up, and then the four of them go and somehow find that same cave in his dream. Um, actually, it's literally just all a dream, what am I even saying? But, <laughs> but I think, like, the cultural impact that this game has for the rest of the series is, like, probably just as important as the original Mario, if I'm being honest, because we have enemies like, um... Shy guys, but bombs, Brodo, and um, just like some other uh, stuff that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and I'd say for the original version, like it's a little bit annoying about like the 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 way the continue system works. You only get two continues, and after that, you're restarting the game again. Uh, other than that, it's pretty solid for what it's worth, and I'd say overall it's a B tier for me. Okay, so my opinion of this game, of uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, I remember like my dad says he really loved this game and considered it to be one of the best Mario games. And I actually heard some people say that it, it it's really good as well and it's fun to play. I don't see it. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad game, but I just don't find it really that memorable. The only memorable thing I can really find from it is from the Super Mario Bros. TV show. I guess that's fair. And, um... I just, and another thing I don't like from this game, I just find it difficult. Like, mm. like okay, it's not the most difficult game, but actually it's pretty, kind of difficult, but I just cannot pass the first world for some reason, no matter how hard I try. Oh. Uh, maybe because I just, maybe because I just suck at the game, I don't know, but I cannot make it past the first world, no matter how hard I try. So, yeah, I don't have much to say about it, despite being really annoying. But I do have to say, I feel like some of the character choices, Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach, and they all have their abilities. Mario's just normal, Luigi jumps higher, Peach can float, and Toad, I don't know what Toad really does. Faster. Runs full. Faster. Also has, a yeah. gift. also has a lower jump. Oh, lower jump, yeah, yes. Yeah. Lower jump and faster speed. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so, other than that, um, that's all I really have to say about it, but did you, oh, uh, and how about, how about the final boss? It's literally not even Bowser. It's a, a frog, I think, named Wart or something. Yeah, Wart. And then uh, we fight Bruno like over and over again, and also we fight Bowser. <laughs> the only uh, character I, I care for because he appears in like almost all the the Super Show episodes. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that's his official name in the actual game, but come on. Yeah, he is Bowser. It is Bowser. Yeah. Okay, good. Because if they would have changed that, I was going to be so upset. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, and, uh, but, yeah, so, like I said, that's not, that's all I have to say about this game. The only thing I can find memorable about it is the music. So, but I do put it in C tier, but above um, the original one, because I do put it in So, that's all I have to say about it. Um, don't think I played this game, but I will, I guess I could mention some notes with that one. I remember doing my during a graphics arts class I had in high school, I remember I did learn about that, and I thought that was super interesting to see that it was actually a reskin, or, like, they took a lot from a different game, and especially when I learned about, like, those four characters' abilities and how they were kind of just adapted into the characters' abilities that they also had in 3D World, like, I thought that was genuinely pretty interesting to mm. know that, but also, just from what Alex said about the whole story stuff, it kind of sounds like, I guess, this game was the original game, but... But, yeah, basically, it sounds like there was... I, again, I can't really rank it since I never played it, so... So, yeah, just thought I'd bring this up. Just thought that was interesting, at least. Uh, I haven't played this game, but it definitely looks pretty fun. Mm. I, th I do agree with B-tier. Mm. I think I'll leave it there. I think... I'll have to remember to, like, make sure it's, like... Uh, bottom of B tier uh, after we put st more stuff in B tier uh, but yeah anyway moving on to a game that also has had uh, some uh, pretty cultural impact it is Super Mario Brothers 3 
and Yay. the sto- the story is definitely like a step up from the original Mario one, in that um, uh, first uh, Bowser sends the Koopa kids, or, excuse me, Koopalings, or one of the doesn't matter the name, they're one of the same, um, to wreak havoc on the Mushroom World, not specifically the Mushroom Kingdom, I believe, um, and so Mario and Luigi had to go and uh, help take care of that. And um, while that's happening, Bowser goes and uh, kidnaps Peach and takes her uh, to uh, Darkland. And it's definitely like more of a step up uh, from Mario 1 in terms of story. Um, And in terms of everything else, there's definitely like a lot more uh, impactful music from this game. A lot more music in general, uh, for one. Um, And like, the sprite work is definitely a lot better, IMO. And a lot of this, excuse me, um, a lot of the stuff that um, was introduced in this game, like, probably makes it like the wacky, like, we have stuff like the new power ups, like the Tanuki suit, the hammer suit, the frog suit, um, which the Tanuki suit specifically um, is still like pretty important today. Um, and the hammer suit kind of like allowed us to have the boomerang flower in. Uh, 3D land and world. Um, and just like the, the introduction to the world maps, which, from what I remember from a, a regional comparison between the original uh, Mario 3 on NES and Mario 3 on the Japan's Famicom, um, is that I think the developers uh, were treating the world maps like a, like a board game kind of thing. Um, which I find that pretty fascinating and something that I didn't consider. But... Overall, I I definitely say uh, Mario Three is probably an A tier. Not like my favorite Mario game, but like it definitely is like, like, yeah, it's just A tier. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> okay, so Mar- Super Mario Bros. Three is another game that a lot of people plays to be the greatest Mario game of all time. And like I said with Mario Bros. Two, I don't see it. But I'm not again. Before people start to bash me and say, like, oh, how dare I not give this an eight an S grade game? It's like, look, I'm not saying this game is bad by any means. I think it's pretty fun from time to time, but I it's just like Marvel's 2 to me. I just don't find this game that memorable. Again, the uh, maybe it's because I, I saw the TV show before I actually played the game, and honestly, I just find the TV show better. But I'm just <laughs> saying, true. like, it is fun. Don't get me wrong, but. I just, there are, like, so many levels I just find super annoying to play. Um, Trust me, there are still levels that I hate in Mario 3 too, like that stupid muncher one, but that's not really, like, dragging the game down that much for me. Yeah, and so, yeah, I'm not a fan of both of the levels in the game, but, um, and, um, I'm trying to but I will admit the music in in Fire 3 is pretty amazing. I will admit. And um, uh, and the final boss of Bowser is actually pretty interesting. Uh, not gonna lie. Oh yeah. And uh, another thing I, I want to talk about this game is that and how it was uh, revealed because it was in like a movie or something or. Oh yeah, or the wizard. That's right. I forgot about that. Some some. Him and his little brother were going like an adventure, and then um, once they got the game, it was to be Super Mario Bros. Three. Okay, so it. yeah, that was that. So it has a it has a pretty interesting history to it behind it. True. And and like you said, um, Alex, um, it is kind of one of the most important games of the franchise because it has a lot of the power. Well, not it has most of the power ups uh, that we know today, and all that stuff, and. Um, and pretty much what 2D Mario is pretty much known for nowadays, like cup rules and stuff. Major improvement is that you can actually go left in the level. Yes, that's also a huge improvement as well. So, yes, it is definitely better than the first game, but I'm not going to put it in S tier. I'm going to put it in the lower A tier. So, but it's still a fun game from time to time. I'm just, it just won't be my favorite game of all time. Yeah. Okay, I don't remember if I did play it or not, but I feel like I've seen at least enough to actually make a ranking. So, I mean, not just, I'm totally didn't just watch 
Cat Mario, and that was it. But <laughs> I digress. <laughs> that's, okay, that I like it. Like, like, like you did say, it did introduce some pretty iconic powers, and I especially do like the like the music for, especially like, especially like the um the freaking first world like theme. Like that that theme is definitely one that I just constantly go in my head from time to time. If, if uh, yep. if it's the same one that it, like I think you're referring to the map theme for World mm -hmm. One, the the theme that happens to be my alarm, and it usually works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course it works. Why would it not? But <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I didn't play it since I really can't think of anything else to say. But I get, I mean, I will say the physics are definitely a bit better. I'd say. So you know what, um. For what I've seen or played of it, I'll give it a B. Um, Mario 2 is pretty good. It's definitely my favorite Mario three. on the NES. Yeah, 3. I, th I thought you said 2. No, it's 3. But, uh, all the... It's just, it's not as slippery as Mario 1, but I still find the controls a little bit awkward. But I do like it more than 1, 2, and Lost Levels. So I agree with A. Mm. Alright. Yeah, I think we can all agree it, it, it. 3 is better than the Lost Levels thing. By a long shot. Pretty sure everything's better than those, whatever you're mm -hmm. talking about. Everything's better than Lost Levels. Yes. And. I mean, who knows? I might like a challenge. <laughs> okay, I did first. Not when there's troll blocks and stuff. Anyway. Uh, we're moving on to Super Mario Land, which. Its story is, like, similar to the, the these four Mario games, but. Uh, just different enough to like stand out because there's some alien named Tatanga that evades Daisy's territory, Sarasaland. Um, and so Mario has to navigate through four kingdoms within Sarasaland to save her and free the people and stuff. Um, and it may be short, uh, there's 12 levels, um, but some of them, a few of the levels, especially in the Chai Kingdom, can get uh. Uh, relatively long for Game Boy standards, um, but and like adding to that, um, a lot of the stuff from Mario One carries over, uh, namely the fact that you cannot go back left, and also uh, the physics are relatively wonky. I'd say wonkier than Mario One, uh, because you, you kind of like build up speed like like really really fast, um, kind of on par with Mario World a little bit. And, uh, you, like, falling, you fall like a brick if you're not jumping. Like, if you're just, like, uh, just running off a ledge, you're gonna sink down to the ground. Kind of like in Donkey Kong. Um, but, the thing that makes it better than the first Mario game, in my opinion, is the music. Be like, the music in Mario Land is probably, like, my favorite, like, retro music in terms of, uh, the NES days of, uh, Mario games, especially Chai Kingdom's theme, I love that theme so much because it just screams the Chinese culture that Chai Kingdom is, and for, and like that alone like puts Mario Land uh, above Mario One for me, uh, but just still in C tier for me. So that's all I gotta say on that front. Okay. Okay. So. Um... So, uh, Mario Land is probably the game I probably have the least to talk about because um, I barely played it. And uh, but what I have played from it, it's just okay. Like my dad and my mom both love it because of the Game Boy stuff and the music. But I don't know, it's just it's just okay. Like I just find it super wonky to control, and and the physics are not very well done. Uh, and I feel like you move either too fast or too slow. And like you said, Alex, you drop like a brick. So yeah, um, Super Mario Land is pretty much what I said from the uh, from the first one. It was good for its time, especially for the Game Boy. But there are miles better games in um, in the Game Boy eventually. Also, for some reason, you don't even say Peach in this game. You actually say Daisy, which exactly at the like, time, I, like I said, yeah. Oh, I kind of forgot that. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Either way, uh, anyway. though. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Anyway, um, which at the time it was very shocking to find out that it was Daisy instead of Peach. 
Because I don't. I think this is Sage's first appearance. That is correct. That could be. It is correct. Uh, so yeah, it does have an interesting like ideas and stuff, and I love some of it, and even the music. So I'm gonna put it in higher C tier, okay. below uh, Super Mario Bros. Two for me. Mm. I w- I will say uh, before Jordan goes that like, like, the ma- like Daisy's introduction is like the main cultural in- impact from this game, uh, because like, she has definitely like grown in terms of the series. Like, so much so that, like, she actually, like, is appearing in main, uh, main, more mainline games now. Well, just a single one, that is Mario Wonder. Uh, but actually appearing alongside Toadette, who was introduced in a freaking spin-off, and it started to appear in mainline Mario games, starting from Odyssey. Uh, anyway, go ahead, Jordan. Nothing much to say, I never played this one. Although, again, I guess if I can make some notes. Okay, although, yep, it's interesting to see this as being Daisy's first appearance. But I, I kind of ran out of things already. <laughs> um, other than, well... No, 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 I literally have not seen... I hardly see anything of this game, like, at all. Really. Like, like, truly, I don't... I hardly remember any cutscenes. Or, no, not cutscenes, but... Or just... Or gameplay in general. So, sorry if I was coming right there, but yeah, I don't know what else I could say other than well. I mean, again, interesting to see this as being Daisy's first appearance, but personally, I'm more of a Rosa person. But that, that's all. I remember playing this back when I had my Game Boy SP before I lost it on a plane. But I remember it was actually. It was good, but it was definitely wonky. I think I've only ever beaten the first world with like the Sphinx boss, mm-hmm. but I do I do like this game. It's pretty good. Where would you put it? Um, I think where it is now is good. All right, I'll leave it there. All right, as we're pretty much reaching the over the half hour mark, uh, we're gonna speed right along to Mario World, which is uh, the first game that I personally put in S tier because. Um, like it, it it changed a lot for the Mario formula. Um, the main the main one obviously is that Yoshi was introduced. Um, number two, the graphics because it's on the SNES, one of the one of the I think launch titles for the SNES, in fact. Um, and personally, for as for as weird as the physics are in comparison to the the rest of the Mario series, like because the physics are like a lot faster than Mario 3. Um, I kind of prefer it, especially because, like, um, my personal, like, experience in terms of, like, the difficulty progression is for Mario World instead of Mario 3. Um, and part part of that is because, like, because of the show, the cartoon, um, Mario World, like, means a lot more to me because um, the title theme from Mario World is like my favorite like like one of my favorite songs in the entire series um anyway i'm going off a little bit side tangent uh because another thing i like is the story in which mario luigi and peach are going on vacation uh bowser just so happened to have invaded dinosaur island um and so he immediately kidnaps peach the second they get there after um mario and luigi go for a little bit of a cape expedition in the sky after they arrive um and also um the final boss with bowser like where he's in the clown car and you gotta shoot the mecha koopas up at his face it's like somewhere in my top five favorite final bosses for the mario series and so (coughs) with all of that together i mario world's a nest here that's all i can say (laughs) Okay, so Super Mario Bros. Uh, oh, no, wait, why is it Super Mario Bros? I meant Super Mario World. Um, well, it is it's definitely Super Mario one of my favorite games of the entire uh, franchise. Like, I, I, people are not a huge fan of Super Mario World because of some of the places on it, but honestly, I actually much prefer the physics in Super Mario World than Super Mario Bros. 3. Because, I mean, yes, I will admit the controls are a little bit slippier, or sli- slippery, but I honestly rather have that. Because I feel like you build speed a lot faster than uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. Well, you're just kind of slow in the first 
So, uh, and also this game introduced my favorite character of the franchise, uh, Yoshi, as I'm a huge fan of Yoshi, as everyone knows by this point. Um, I'm Yoshi, but okay. What? That, nothing, just going on. Slandering. Yeah, that's like Bob. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. I, I just said, everybody's a fan of Yoshi. Pretty that makes uh, sense. Yeah, uh, about that. Luigi's my favorite character, not Yoshi. Yeah. But uh, people, you get my point. People yeah, uh, alright, anyway, uh, keep going, Michael. Okay, anyway, uh, and I also have super nostalgia for the Super Mario World TV show, uh, because I don't know why, but I just find it to be the best out of the three shows I've watched for some reason. Oh. Maybe because I just like the voice acting for some reason. Even though it's the same in episode. three. Especially uh, one episode that has one of the best songs ever, like Alex says. Which and you... the story also um, has an episode uh, of the TV show as well. And um, and also an interesting fact about Super Mario World um, is that most of the Mario Kart tracks from Super Mario Kart have some of the names from Super Mario World, which is very interesting to me, especially and, at that time. And themes, to an extent. And yeah, themes as well. Not, Especially uh, 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 and I mean like 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 level themes, not like the music. But, like, with the exception of Bowser Castle having uh, the Mario World Final Boss as its theme, which I still think that um, the music for uh, the SNES Bowser Castle remix in uh, 8 is like the best version of the Mario World Final Boss theme, but I digress. Oh, and also, this is the first game to introduce secret levels. Well, technically. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Or I don't know, I don't know secret levels, but I should say probably say secret exits. Yeah. That probably makes more sense. Mm -hmm. The thing we're gonna talk about is it the whistles uh, from Mario Three Secrets? I'm like, technically yes, but I'm talking about like secret exits. Anyway. Oh yeah, and also, let's not forget that he also has one of the hardest games of all time in Mario. Um, Turbion, or whatever the hell it's called. Tubular? Are you talking about the stupid balloon one? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, I, I, I still hate that level. Even though I never really played it, really, uh, but I heard it's pretty awful. And, I, and if I ever do get there eventually in my lifetime, um, I, I will definitely not be looking forward for that one. That's why in my recent time, I try to, like, bring my blue Yoshi with him and try to, like, uh, get the, the paratroopers that are in the air and just fly through the rest of the level. Yeah, and oh, and also, uh, minus the a couple of the spin-offs, this is the last time we're going to see the Koopalink until of the Wii, the mm. mainline Mario. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, I can talk about Super Mario World for all day, but I have to get a move on at this point, so I'm just going to say it's S-tier. So far, the best one, but obviously there's a lot more games that I think are better than this one, but still the best classic Mario games of the of this era, in my opinion. S-tier. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Relax, calm down, put down the pistol. The freaking Yoshi's Island track debate over here. <laughs> okay, but... Okay, so... Okay, I remember I definitely did play this game completely, technically with Alex's help, but... But never mind that, but okay, so on one hand, I do feel like this one definitely is an improvement compared to the other classic Mario games. Or like I'd say it's like like the story's a bit better, it's definitely looks a lot nicer. The story's more interesting, did I already say that? I don't know, but No you did not, but yeah. Um yeah, especially I do like how this is when we get the introduction to our favorite green Pokemon. <laughs> 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 was not ready for that sentence. <laughs> that got me. <laughs> but, okay, anyway. Which, I will say, there are definitely some things in this that don't really age well, especially the part about Mario bonking Yoshi on the head, but, like, come on, that's to be expected. Uh, can I uh, say something about that? Yes. Um, I've seen a video where someone actually, like, uh, played, like, played footage of Mario doing that animation with Yoshi, like, slowed down to, like, 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 0.1% speed or something like that. Um, where I think it's, like, I believe Mario's, like, um, sprite of his fist, uh, going outward, um, I think that plays first 
just before Yoshi extends his head outward. Uh, and, and and adding to that, adding to that, there is artwork, um, that like shows that exact moment. That literally like is supposed to be uh, depicting Mario's pointing forward instead of smacking Yoshi's head. Uh, okay, just, okay, just gonna stop for a second. It's like, yes, I know they definitely changed it like that, but I'm pretty sure originally it was supposed to be a bonk in the head before they changed it to a pointing, which... Okay, but anyway, I'm getting off topic. That's up for debate. Okay, like, one hand, I feel like, yeah, like, I feel like this game is pretty good. On the other hand, though, I definitely have my downsides. Like, sometimes, like, jumps are harder than they need to be, or, like, or harder than they... Maybe that's a neat problem, but... <laughs> Okay, like, especially, I think my biggest problem I say with this game is that is the thing where you take damage. Every time you take damage, like, if you have, oh, like, a yeah. power-up, is that it doesn't just take away the power. It shrinks you all the way down. Yeah, the like, Mario 1 rules. Yeah, I, me, I forgot about like, that. To me, that seems like too much. And especially since if you have, like, the little item bo- item in the item box thing, it'll immediately just drop it down. And sometimes you could end up missing it. Like, like that gets annoying. Because, like... It's like, if you lose your power, you don't have a backup yet. So, if you miss them both, then you're kind of screwed. Can I say one more thing, uh, interrupting you regarding that specific thing? Um, because, um, we, we know that, like, the rules for damage in Mario World is the same as Mario 1, but another thing, um, uh, for Mario 3, in the Japan version, it's the same thing. Um, where if you take damage, like, if you have a full set of power-ups, like, if you're in the Tanuki suit, riding around the Goomba shoe, and you take damage, uh, you're going all the way back to small Mario and Mario 3 in Japan. Right. So, like, I think, like, Mario World was just, like, the tail end of them still, um, doing that. And I guess they just didn't change that for the American version of Mario World, but, anyway. Um, okay, one more thing I was gonna point out before I say my ranking is that I, I especially do, like, the OST again, like... Especially, like, the victory theme for, like, every time you clear a castle stage, there's something about it that just definitely feels extra, like, achieving. Mm. And also just, and also just as I have seen your enemies boil in the lava, it definitely fits that <laughs> vibe. <laughs> that's got dark, but... If, if I, if well, I could okay. say, say a swear word here, I'd just be like, F the Koopa Links, <laughs> even though some of them are my favorite characters. <laughs> okay, but anyways, for my ranking, um... I'll, I'll give it an A, mainly because it is definitely the better of the classics, but definitely isn't it S. I want to like this game, but I don't. I don't know. It's in theory, it's fun, but I don't know. I just feel like it's always annoying whenever I played it for like the reasons you brought up. It always makes you small Mario when you get hit. It's kind of annoying to control. Uh, I don't know. The enemies are, do get kind of annoying, how they just fly in from the right super fast sometimes. So, I personally like Mario 3 more than World, but I really hope they do like a Wonder-style remake of Mario World. That would be awesome. Oh, that would be cool, actually. Uh, what would you rank it? I'd put it uh, A, but below Mario 3. Hmm. I think the average would be above Mario 3, then. I was like, would you rank it higher or lower than Mario 3, Jordan? I'd say above. Mainly because, again, I don't really remember everything from Mario 3, but again, mm-hmm. I feel like it's definitely has better music and more interesting story. Mm-hmm. I think we'll leave it at that, then. Anyway, next we're moving on to Super Mario Land 2, and once again, uh, similar to the first Mario Land, the story this time around is super, well, it's actually a lot more derivative this time around. Mario has a, an entire private freaking island to himself. Um, and during the events of Mario Land 1, Wario takes over the castle and puts everyone there on mind, uh, under mind control. And so after uh, Daisy's rescue, Mario has to head back to his island and uh, put a stop to Wario by getting the six golden coins to unlock his castle. And yes, Mario has a freaking castle. Um, overall, like... That, that's basically, like, a rundown of the story. Overall, the physics are, like, kind of... I think they're on par with Mario World, but they're, like... Actually, they're more of a combination of Mario World and Mario 3's controls. 
Uh, the sprite work is definitely on par with Mario World sprites. Um, and they look really nice for Game Boy. Uh, mm. And it also has, like, secret... It, it's, like, it's a lot bigger than Mario Land 1. It has, like, a lot more levels and stuff. Uh, and there's secret levels. Secret exits and stuff like that. Um... Other than the introduction of Wario, I don't think there's a lot of cultural impact, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't really have much else to say. I just, it's just a kind of a B tier for me, but higher than Mario 2. I honestly don't have much to say about Mario Land 2. I only played like one time uh, on the Switch Online thing, and I got to like, I think like the second world or something, and I haven't really touched it since. But what I have played for it, it's actually pretty kind of enjoyable. Definitely better than the first one, for sure. <laughs> uh, especially with the carrot I'm... Oh, yeah, if you're mashing like a maniac with that thing. Yeah, and, um, and it's also interesting to think that this is Wario's technically first appearance, and he was the main antagonist of the game. Yeah. And then he'll, he'll turn out to be a recurring character from all the Mario spinoffs, and even get his own game eventually. Yep. So, um, yeah, I I just don't have much to say about it, other than that, oh my god, Mario literally got eaten by a damn turtle. <laughs> so, I think I'm gonna put it, I think it is better than the first Mario Land for sure, uh, but I think I'm gonna put it just barely a lower B tier, as for right now. My opinions could change on it later, but that's what I'm doing this as for now. What? Run Mario Land 2. Yeah, that, that was my answer. Oh. Oh, another I game you haven't played, never mind. I, I literally don't care. Not that I don't care, I just haven't played it. If I didn't play the first one, why would I play this one? Well, so I well, think I played it. So. Well, I mean, I, I, uh, I yeah. honestly do recommend you play the second one. It's a lot, a lot better than the first one. But uh, yeah. anyway, that's Maybe. a side tangent. Uh, Prism, go ahead. If you have anything to say. I have not played this one, but it does look better than the first. It is. Yeah, I promise you it's a lot better in every guard. Maybe except the music, personally. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, so I think we'll just leave it I mean, on B tier. I mean, I guess if I can make a little quick side note after my little dilemma there is that I, the only thing I remember from it is just seeing that weird commercial of friggin' Wario hip hop. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Obey me, Wario! Destroy Mario! <laughs> I forgot about that commercial. I am your master. Mario is your enemy. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I got nothing from that. Yeah. I just completely forgot about that commercial. Okay, anyway. Alright, um. This is a. Mario 64 is going immediately in S tier for me because, like. Number one, um, it has the slide theme, which is another one of my favorite themes in, in the game or in the series. Um, and it has, once again, probably more cultural impact than Mario One uh, because it it like there's a lot of staples for this. Number one, Charles Martinet uh, as the voice of Mario in the main lines, even though he was the voice of Mario in the previous games before sixty four. Uh, but I digress. There's just a lot of stuff in general about Mario 64 that, like, means a lot to me. Because 64 DS, like, I loved that growing up. And, like, I haven't played uh, DS as much uh, since. But I still uh, played every uh, every once in a while from time to time. That would probably, like, be an S tier with the, uh, 64. Um, but, like, 64 is, like, the one game that, like, I can actively speedrun because... Um, I have, like, memorized a lot of the speedrun tricks for 64. Like, the bomb clip, cannonless, uh, the Womp King ground pound glitch, um, the, stu the, the tall, tall mountain, uh, j jump into the mountain and warp up halfway up glitch. And that's just scraping the tip of the iceberg, no pun intended, with this game. Um, and it's literally just, like, an S tier, but... If it were my personal ranking, it'd probably be below Mario World. Just below Mario World, but yeah. 
Okay, so Super Mario, uh, Super Mario 64 to me is probably the most controversial one for me. As honestly, I think this game is one of the most poorly aged games of the Mario franchise. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's a bad game. Because it's probably because I'm spoiled by classic controller pro games. controller. But I'm just not a fan of this one, honestly. Like, it's just, I just don't like the graphics. I'm not a fan of the controls of the game. Um, and I just, everything's just ugly with it. And, um, but there are things I like from this game, like the music, the slide theme, like a lot of things. I think it has a lot of charm. And especially for its time, like the first ever greedy game, like ever. Yeah. Like, it is one of the most important games, like, in the franchise. Like, for sure. But, I just... I just don't know. I just think people just go super hype with this game, like, all the time. Especially people from the 90s. There are much better games than this one. But I will admit, I actually do like speedrunning this game, as it, it is a lot of fun. And it's probably the only one I could probably speed Besides, maybe, um... Maybe the new Super Mario Bros. games. After you give your ranking, but, if, uh, if it's okay if I, like, uh, give other stuff to say. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Nah, you go ahead and uh, give your ranking, I'll say myself after. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I was just, just gonna say. Uh, yeah, so... Ma Super Mario Bros. Uh, okay, Sorry. it's Super Mario 64. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> my brain is completely lost today for some reason. I'm sorry about that. Nah, it's, it's my bad. Um, anyway, so, yeah, Super Mario 64, it's just like, uh, I don't know where I'm gonna rank it. Oh, yeah, before I actually rank it, I'll talk a little about DS, and honestly, I actually played the DS version first because I was born in the 2000s. Yeah, me too. So, yeah, and honestly, I, I thought, for a long time, I thought 64 was actually, DS was actually better, because I actually preferred the controls in that game compared to, um, the original, but actually pretty recently on the 64 DS version, I actually find the controls kind of awkward to control. And, um, yeah, but, especially with Mario and Wario, like, those two are, like, the worst. But, the controls of Luigi and Yoshi are actually pretty fine to me. Especially with Luigi, because he can literally backflip, and you can get so many stars with him. <laughs> and, of course, the mini games from that game as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know. It's somewhere between A tier and B tier for me for Mario 64. I think for the speedrun stuff, I definitely put it in A tier, but for, like, normally, I probably put it higher B. Because it was good for its time, but looking back at it, I think there are so many games that are much better this one. So, I think I'm going to put it in lower A tier, but uh, not as good as Mario. Yeah. But... It's nostalgia, so I can understand why people may like this game. I do just don't think it's so. Mm. Alright, so the stuff I was going to say is that, uh, number one, uh, I'm <laughs> very much spoiled by the Wii's Classic Controller Pro, because that is the controller I use when I'm playing the game, because I have it on the Wii U Virtual Console, and, like, the Classic, the classic Pro Controller, um, because of the joystick being, like, the 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 eight like the octagonal uh circle like i don't know what it's called but like it's basically just the nunchuck yeah because like I, I don't know if like what that like the term is for like the like octagonal shape that the joystick uh resides in for the classic controller um but because of that i can do like some of the precise stuff um for things like cannon list because you have to be very precise on the controls for that and like Holding straight down is not as easy on, like, the Switch's Pro Controller as compared to the Classic Controller. So I'm able to, like, do Canonless no problem on that. Um, and, like... And also, like, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that, like, the story is also, like... Like, pr like a lot more on the interesting side when compared to, like, half of the other Mario games is that uh, Bowser evades Peach's castle and, like, basically tra traps her and... And... Uh, the toads and stuff uh, in paintings uh, with the power of the power stars and the fact that in DS he was able to like uh, trap Mario, Luigi, and Wario indoors uh, after a ruse with cake or whatever like if not for the fact that Yoshi was sleeping on the castle Bowser would have freaking won and taken over the kingdom in no time flat 
uh, if, there, if there's another thing I would say about 64 is that my dad uh, considers this game to be the greatest Mario game of all time. I'm no. not sure by him, but still, yeah, I just want to mention that. Um, okay, technically I haven't really played this game. Like, yes, I had a few, few times where I played it, either on DS or that one time where the Michael's house is just crazy with the glitch thing, but... Um, I guess if I could say something in mainly your responses to Michael's opinion about it not aging well... Okay, like... Okay, like... For, for, as far as I could see, it seems like any time... Whenever, like, a series that... A video game series that gets, like... That goes from having... That's, Hang on, that starts from having 2D playing games that's having a 3D game. It sounds like it's a pretty big difference. Like, it's a 3D playing game, instead of it just being the 2D like we've known as 3D. Especially for its time, in 1996. Which, yeah, like, okay, like, one, since, it's, since it was that long ago, of course 3D stuff has kind of moved back then. So, of course, it's, of course it's not always going to age well. But if I'm going to be honest, in response to that, like... Okay, as far as I've seen, like, sure, like, there's some points where maybe it might not age well, but if I can say something for fact, Mario 64 definitely ages better than Sonic Adventure, that's for sure. I mean, I guess if I would have to give it a ranking, I'd give it a B. Like, again, I haven't really played that much of this, but, I mean, again, I feel like its story is definitely one that does still hold up. Like, I guess I can see why people still like it, but... At the same time, yes, of course, obviously, now we have better choices, but it's still always nice to look back at this, since this definitely introduced a lot of iconic things. Alright, Mario 64 is another one that I really want to like, but I don't. Uh, I have played it a few times, it's just, being an early N64 game, it's definitely, you can definitely tell that they were still working on it. Uh, as good as the 3D controls are for the N64, they are still not the best. I find, I... When I do play it, I definitely get mad at Mario for not going where I want him to go. It's just, I feel like 64 is more annoying than anything. Although, I can definitely see why people like it. Yeah, that's that's my frustration with uh, the controls of 64. Because sometimes Mark, not only that Mario moves so awkwardly sometimes, most of the time, but sometimes he doesn't want, he moves to where I don't want him to go. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm and sure I also, probably A. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay. I was, gonna, I was gonna say something else about uh, 64. I believe this is the first time they called um, Peach um, in the American version, and then they called her that in a sense. I could be wrong, but I'm not sure. I yeah. Oh yeah, they originally called her Princess Toadstool. At least for us, because yeah. I think even I think even in the the Japanese stuff, actually. No, I know that for a fact that like uh, for Japan she was like still called Peach and like. Even up to like a uh, Mario RPG, uh, in Japan she was referred to as uh, Princess Peach, and then uh, be... Mario 64 came out right after that, and we uh, got Peach as well as the name. But I think I'm not sure if this is correct or not. But I think in the it's somewhere for uh, Mario One source material, um, something like that. Um, they actually refer to. Uh, Peach as Peach in something. I don't remember where I seen this, and I'm not sure if it's specifically for the for the North American release or the Japan release. I can't remember, but I know I've seen somewhere that from Mario One she was still called Peach there as well. I also I also remember uh, the reason I seen a video once that why Peach was not called Peach in the American version. It was because apparently they didn't like it at first. But then once they got to 64, they're like, eh, whatever, we'll just keep it. Mm. That, That's that, what I heard. I... That probably would make sense. I think that is, actually, because they thought it didn't really make sense for it to be called Peach when she lived in a place full of mushrooms. So they gave her a name. So they originally gave her a name that kind of fit the whole mushroom vibe a bit more. I Honestly, like, to this day, yeah. I personally believe that, like, Peach Toastool is her full name. I think that's what it's supposed to be. All right. Anyway, uh, we're move as we're jumping up to uh, the next uh, generation of consoles, we now have Super Mario Sunshine, which personally for me, I definitely do like it. Like I, f I feel like it should be objectively better than Mario sixty four. In the grand scheme of things, uh, the main thing that like boosts it up is the fact that Flood is there, and like he makes things like a, like a lot easier for the most part, and like. Once again, Mario and Peach are taking a vacation, 
bringing along Toadsworth, his first appearance in the series. Um, and uh, Bowser has already done some stuff in the form of Bowser Jr. basically like uh, doing some dirty work across the island in the form of Shadow Mario, and therefore Mario gets framed for it. Uh, and so the, I think the I think that was Bowser prompting Bowser Jr. to uh, like do that so that Mario can get framed. Um, but there are some things about Sunshine that like really grind my gears a lot more than like the rest of the games on here. Maybe aside from Lost Levels, because that grinds my gears more. Um, but like. There are a lot of things about Mario Sunshine that are that are pretty good. Don't get me wrong, but there's things like the hundred coins, the and that stupid, stupid, effing pachinko machine that drag Mario Sunshine down like to A tier, or actually like no, drag it down to B tier because like A tier will be will be where I put Sunshine if not for that stupid pachinko machine because. Every time I get to Sunshine in my marathons, that pachinko machine ruins my life. And in some aspects, more than the lost levels. And, like, <laughs> that's literally the only thing that, like, really drags Sunshine down for me. Because, like, the, sun the, the 100 coin stars are bad, but there's only seven of those. Because I think there's seven levels in Sunshine. Main levels, I mean. And, like... They're annoying, but they're not that bad. That pachinko machine can go burn to a crisp in hell. That's all I had to say on Sunshine. Okay, uh, so if you guys remember that discussion video that was like four years ago, I think it was, um, I said that Sunshine was the best Mario game ever. Now, is that still true? No. But I still really like the game. I think it has an interesting... It's definitely a lot interesting in some ways. Like, I think the controls are, like, a lot better, especially with Blood, because he makes things a lot easier. And I also like the music in the game. I still think it's one of the best in the whole series. Uh, and especially the, 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 the scene of the sheet, uh, music, because I remember when I first heard it in, like, um, Super Mario DS and New Super Mario Bros. How, and it was, like, so great to me back then. And then when I played Sunshine for the first time, when I get to that area, I was like, holy crap, that's actually in the game? I didn't even know that. I actually, that, that was my same, that was my same relevation to you. <laughs> and um, most of the levels, well, some of them, are pretty good for what it, for what it's for. It, it kind of sucks that it's more of a leading the game than an actual open world back in 64. But it's not a bad thing. The like, galaxy is worse in that way, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, uh, now like Alex says, there are a few things that definitely drag it down for me from being an S tier to an S tier. And that is, some of the levels are just garbage. Like, the stupid Petra machine. Like, that has got to be one of the worst level designs I've ever played in Mario. Besides maybe some of the boss levels. Like, for some reason, like, on the left side, you can't, you have no control. Like, at all. You literally have to, like, ground pound at the last second for it to work. And it doesn't want to cooperate sometimes for some reason. So, yeah, like Alex says, that level could just go burning hell. And I also heard that some people complain about the Lily Pad minigame, but honestly, I actually find that to be a lot easier. Yeah, no, like, the, the Lily Pad minigame, like, I can mitigate that problem because of the flood pack. Like, if I miss a red coin, I can just like hover to the side and go back to this and go back and just restart. And granted, there may be a few slip ups here and there, but like, I like it's. I at the very least like still have some control over what I'm doing, and like yeah, and I get the mastery over over uh, using a uh, flood to shoot the little pad uh, across the poisonous river, and like it's usually it, like it usually like takes me like five tries at mm -hmm. most. I bet like usually when it comes to little pad minigame. The, but the Pachinko machine, it takes me like 30 to 50 or something. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you, the, the hardest part about the Lily Pad minigame is you still have to be careful with the poison and you have to hover and grab a left at that right like, time. But it, it's not that bad with practice. Mm -hmm. and, but anyway, but there are like, like I hate the blue ones. Like, they're like one of the worst. 
Like, they're, like, all over the place, and sometimes you can't even find for them. Like, one time I played oh, yeah. in the 3D All-Star version, and I could have sworn I got every single blue point in Serena Beach, and I checked every area, but apparently I was missing one, and I checked, I swear I checked every area, and for some reason I never got it. It said I got everything, but apparently I didn't. So, yeah, the blue points a bit, uh, really suck, especially in Noki Bay. Good God, Noki Bay is the worst. I'm probably Not spoiled for... for blue coins by the guides because, like, whenever I play Sunshine, I only follow the guides because, like, I can't, I don't think I could ever do the blue coins without them. Like, even if I did, like, try to memorize them all because, like, I can, like, get, get some of my, the blue coins on my way that, uh, through the levels, but I kind of prefer to just, like, do them separately now oh, with the guide, and it makes my life a little bit easier, but, like, I understand that those blue coins can still be obnoxious. But anyway, um, yeah, but I hate the blue boys in Noki Bay. Especially, I also hate Noki Bay in general. I think it's the worst level in the game, in my opinion. It's not that bad, in my opinion. But, um, and another level I don't really, I'm not the biggest fan of Piazza Village, but I find it a little easier. Especially because I can do the glitch in the, uh, third shine, where you have to, um, try to grab your flat pack if I have to, like, surf it away. But if you get hit by the ghost, you can actually, like, be invisible for a little bit longer. So yeah, that one's a little more easier. And um, the final boss is uh, actually pretty interesting as well. You have to literally shoot up in the air and ground pound those uh, sh edges things. I don't know what they call them, but the that like, area. market panels, yeah. Yeah. And don't I get to mention that the first part of the of the game is so completely stupid because I absolutely hated the pianos in the, in the game at first. But they'll, they'll revive later, but I just cannot believe how great dead they were in the first half of the game. Because especially they can clearly tell the difference that Mario is wearing red and doesn't look like, like a shadow figurine or something. But no, apparently they're colorblind or something. I just literally throw them in jail for no reason at all. And I absolutely hate it when people do that. Just throw people, innocent people in jail for literally no reason at all. Threw, threw Mario in there with a weapon, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Enemy, <laughs> yeah, that just proves that that's really stupid. Unless, unless that counts, I don't know. But, nah. but then again, he used it, uh, it as objects anyway. And they, uh, they, they even allow him to take the flood pack with him in jail. I don't think that works in real life, but whatever. Uh, obviously not, no. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, and also Yoshi's playable. I think this is the first time he actually is playable in a 3D uh, game. That is correct. And he's super broken, especially when you do the spin jump. Yeah. With him. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, I could, talk, I could talk about Sunshine all day, but we gotta get yeah, a move. My, yeah, my turn. Come on. <laughs> Hang on. I, I, I'm gonna put it uh, in lower A tier. The only reason why it's not S tier is because that stupid... Some of the levels are just awful in the blue points. That's the only reason. But I still love this game. Okay, um... Okay, again, being said for someone who hasn't played this game yet, and kind of missed his chance to, but I digress. Is that... Okay, I've at least seen gameplay enough so I can at least make an opinion. Is that... Like, the story's interesting. I mean, although cutscenes can be kind of cringy sometimes, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, but... I guess that's true. I'm trying to think, is that... I mean, I feel like how they do talk a bit more than normally. Like, because I feel like sometimes, like... Okay, like, one hand, I do want them to talk more in Mario games, because I feel like their lack of communication is kind of strange, but I guess at the same time with the way they do voice them, I'm like, uh, yeah, I would probably don't say if you hear that too much. And it's why I think it was better that Mario was not voiced by Charles Martin in the movie, but... Okay, we're not talking about that. Uh, Jordan, is, is, <laughs> even then, like, Mario barely spoke any words in Sunshine's cutscenes. The problem is Bowser. I don't think Mario spoke once in Sunshine at all. I, I, feel like like I feel like I've mostly, like, did his, like, his, like, grunts and yells. Like, namely, like, the yell when he's, like, falling after beating Bowser. But, like, I think that's it. Yeah, okay, I mean, good. Anyway. Okay, um... I mean, also, like, I feel like how this game does also introduce some of the, like, some, like, even more iconic characters, like the, um... 
the, 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 I forgot what they were called. They, they were like the citizens of the Delphi. The, the Piantas. What were they called again? The Piantas. Um, yeah, but they also, like, I like how they even introduced, like, like, Petey Piranha and, of course, Bowser Jr. Petey Piranha, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Although, I will say the PD Pro on a polite look kind of silly, honestly. <laughs> like, it is kind of weird. But, and, it, and of course, Flood is also pretty cool. And heck, I do like how they kind of, like, have the whole connection to EGAD in a way, without, like, fully, like, describing it directly. Oh, yeah. I thought that was, thought that was pretty interesting. Although, although it is interesting, like, the whole concept of, like, the paintbrush allowing Bowser Jr. to transport into Shadow Mario. Like, okay, on topic with your kind of complaints, Michael, before about, like, that CMR getting arrested, like, honestly, that's in the same category as freaking, freaking Adventures, Sonic Adventures 2, it's just like, like, yeah. literally, yes, you have the same force, but other than that, he looks nothing alike, how does anyone mistake that? And I also forgot to mention is that it does also introduce the, um, the, what was it, the Cataquacks, I think. Oh, yeah, those dumb but, things. Honestly, personally, I feel like they're kind of underrated, honestly. I think they look cool. Honestly... Like, yes, their gimmick is kind of annoying, but I still think... Like... I, I do kind of resonate that opinion, Jordan, because, like... I feel like in... T like... I think in terms of mainline games, Galaxy 1 was their last appearance. Um, and in terms of spin-offs, I don't really remember... Like, I think their last, like, spin-off appearance was Mario Kart Wii, and I think that's it. No, 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 I mean, I do find the flood interesting, again, this is me except for someone who's never played Sunshine, but, I mean, I do like the story, I'd say it's nice and pleasant, and also, I like tropical areas, they look very relaxing. Hmm. I know you have to like how the audience for the shit, but don't, but, but okay, oh, yeah, sure. so, I guess if I had to at least rank it story at least, I'll give it a B. This is one of my favorite 3D Mario games. It's definitely one where the controls, they definitely take time to get used to. Like, when you first play it, they're annoying. But they're easier than 64 to get used to. Uh, I like the theme, everything. Although I will say this is one of the most annoying Mario games to 100% because of the blue coins and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, just, like, casually playing it is one of the most fun once you get used to the controls. Uh, I like... One thing that was always weird to me is how Flood kind of just dies at the end for no reason. But, uh, okay, okay, that's th true, um, actually. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that was only just because he got an upgrade that he didn't fully adapt to, so that's why he kind of just couldn't handle it. I mean, it always felt weird. He acts normal through the whole game, but once he's beat Bowser, like, why is he dying? I don't know, maybe because he's blasting water that's bigger than his face, like, at very high speed. And also, like, the, the velocity of them, like, ground pounding. And especially because, like, uh, they're they're doing that stuff, like, really high in the air. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I guess I can kind of see what you mean because he does come back to life at the end. So it's just like, the, the, why did he die? What was the point? Just to see if we actually would shed a tear from our robotic guy that's not as good as Wally. <laughs> okay, Damn. sorry that that was that was a bit that was a bit unnecessary. That's a hot take. Uh, where would you rank this? Uh, personally, I'd put it very bottom of S. Mm. But on the tier list, I think between World and Three would fit. I think collectively we do average it out by way of having it. Actually, let me think about it because I put it top of B. Michael said he put it in B. I'm not sure. Uh, where he said he put that, and Jordan said A. I put it in A. Oh, you put an A. Oh, never mind. Anyway, I think we're gonna do one more game uh, to do to have this first part of the tier list because we're sitting at uh, very close to an hour and a half now. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and rank uh, new Super Mario Bros. for the DS, uh, and then the rest of the games we'll get um, uh, tomorrow's tier list or tomorrow's half of the tier list. So, New Super Mario Bros. basically goes back to uh, the Mario series' roots. Um, following the, the Mario Advance games, actually. Um, and it's pretty much the same usual story of, like, Peach getting kidnapped, but by Bowser Jr. this time. And so Mario basically, like, chase, chases Bowser Jr. Uh, through 
uh, the Mushroom Kingdom to get her back and stuff. It's a simple story, and uh, the levels are bite-sized and compact and stuff, for which is is pretty natural for DS standards. And personally, for me, because I'm spoiled by a lot of the other Mario games. It kind of is like, isn't like the greatest New Super Mario Bros. game for me, personally. Uh, just because like, kind of on the vein of some of the older Mario games, there isn't a lot of like, variety. Like, the music gets a little bit repetitive. Like, the overworld, it's it's not to do with the boss. It's just more so like, the overworld theme is like, it's there like, half of the time. Because, uh... Because Mario Wii over here introduced uh, new music for um, the different level themes, like the snow overworld and the forest and stuff like that. Uh, but New Super Mario Bros. DS is not that is not terrible. Um, honestly, the mini games, for as cool as they are, since they are in sixty four DS already, they're they aren't enough to like step up step it up in the ranking for me. And don't get me wrong, I love the original. I okay, let me phrase that. I don't like love the original bosses, but I like the original bosses. But they're kind of on the easy side, and especially Bowser's fights uh, in New Super Mario DS drag it down for me. And so I'd say overall, I'm leaving uh, New Super Mario Bros. DS for my personal opinion bottom of B tier. Fun fact, this was the first um, mainline Mario game I had ever played in my entire life. Um, I might have said it before, I don't remember. Maybe to you guys, but I don't think it's enough. Anyway, um, yeah, um, I, uh, so I, I still will never forget when I first heard of it. Um, one of, um, one of like ABAs or something I used to have, like, came to my house and actually showed me this game. And I was like, oh my god, this is one of the best things ever. I want to play it myself. And I played for a little bit, and not understanding what the hell to do, I kept dying over and over again. And I discovered Peach because I remember her in Mario Kart Wii, but I don't remember Bowser Jr. Who the hell is he? But then I kept dying over and over again, and then she kept getting kidnapped. I was like, what the hell is going on? And then anyway, when I got into the game uh, a lot better, I was like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to rescue Peach. Anyway, so, um, with all the nostalgia reasons I have for this game, um, I still really love this game to this day, and still consider it one of my favorites of the whole series. Um, it, it's just a lot of fun to play, and, um, I actually really like the music, for the most part. Um, uh, and even the mini games, even though some of them are just really recyclable of Super Mario 64 DS for some reason, I'm not sure why, but they are. And I still find it to be extremely fun. Um, and probably my favorite of the new Super Mario Bros. games, in my personal opinion. Um, I also really like the fight boss fights in this one. Well, not all of it, but I like... <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I'm talking too much. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I always have a soft spot for this game. Uh, because the first... Technically, well, it's not the first video game I ever played, but one of the first mainline Mario games I ever played when I started learning. So, I'm putting this in the top S tier so far. Okay, I'm just going to talk completely, like, ignoring nostalgia reasons. Firstly, S tier for me, absolutely. Like, okay, because I know it was, I know it just said I was going to bring up this subject, which, after accidentally stealing a cartridge of this from one of my friends, sorry about that, if you're happy to be watching this, I'm not going to say your name, though, which I remember it, but, honestly, it's a, it was a lot of fun. Like, it was a... It was a pretty classic one. It was it was a lot of it was part of a lot of people's childhoods, and I know I'm just trying to be critical for saying I'm not going to mention nostalgia reasons, but okay, hang on. Okay, like story's simple. Like okay, like bosses I say are good enough. I mean I like I like how they do change it up every now and then, even if it's pretty small. Final, I feel like I'm one of the only few who actually like the final boss. Just like. I guess. I mean, and not to mention even the multiplayer kind of, like, and like mini game kind of stuff you can play along with it. Like, all of those are really good, in my opinion. I really have a lot of fun with them. I guess that's true, especially for the case of Mario vs. Luigi. Like, and a few times that I did play that on the original game, I did have, like, a lot of fun with it. 
But like, I think even even like with that, I it probably would still keep uh, these Murbros, uh in B tier for me. But like, trust me when I say that like, uh, with a new thing for uh, some people have made like an online version of uh, Mario vs Luigi and like having like ten players be allowed for it and like everything else in between for it. Like, don't get me wrong, that's really cool. But like, I'm a little bit more biased for. Uh, the other New Super Mario games, personally. Right. Which, yeah. actually, 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 wait, wait, wait. Something I can't say that, like, does drag, uh, drag it down for me. More specific, it's not, spe it's not getting the star coins, necessarily. It's more specifically getting the star coins in, um, a handful of levels that require the mini mushroom to get them when there's no mini mushroom available in that level. And that's especially uh, true for uh, World 8-8, the one where the stupid uh, meteors are coming down at you from the background. I forgot about that. I, I remember get, when I tried to 100% the game, I was so frustrated with the mini mushroom stuff. Because yeah. I, especially, if, it's like you said, I had to play 1-4 just to get the damn mini mushroom. And it, it was just to make sure I have a backup of it in case I die originally. Yeah. So I get the part. So it's very annoying about that. Anyway. Hopefully that just kind of sounds like your guys' issues <laughs> because honestly, I, I don't think I really struggle with that that much. Or actually, I don't even know if I remember what, if I went back to get the star coins. But... I mean, it's just a matter of like, like you have to remember to bring a mini mushroom with you, and also make sure you like don't get hit because remember the mini the physics with the mini mushroom is a little bit different. Um, but like. You have to make sure you avoid everything in that uh, meteor level. Uh, uh, okay, right. But okay, I don't, I don't want to be speaking for too long here. But um, I guess another thing I could definitely mention is that the power up I really like in this that I wish would come back at some point. Okay, wish it kind of did, but not the same. Is specifically the blue shell item. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the blue shell. I remember when I was younger, I used to pick random numbers and see if I could levels and I, see if I could actually beat it with one of the blue shell for fun. <laughs> like, to me, it's always fun to just, like, go into the shell and not just try to blaze through the entire stage. I've done that before. That I've cool. done that before. It's definitely part of the fun factor for me. That's part. That's part of the the ranking to make to keep it in B tier for me. So yeah. And it was just, and it was especially fun to just like to like go as a Bowser Jr. fight to just walk to just like slam right into him. Like if if the room is big enough for you to do that anyway. So cool. I I also remember playing uh, three dash one. I did it over and over again. It was super fast with it. Yeah, that's true. I, like, I still don't understand how that makes any sense. It and doesn't. It, I just love it. <laughs> and again, OST is always going to be... Yeah, let's not not for, let's see. Let, let me finish first. So oh, yeah, sorry. Overall, overall, like, game part of the show is good. Really fun game. One I wish I could play nowadays, but I'm going to my cartridge. But we'd definitely get it again if I could. Fun game. Nothing beats it. S tier. And whatever you, everybody else's opinion that isn't as tier is false information. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just like more Mario games. Like, well, I like New Super Mario Bros. Wii the best of the New Super Mario Bros. personally. Uh, we'll get to that uh, in tomorrow's, tomorrow's half of the video. Uh, but, like, there are other games that I would, like, personally put in S tier. Um, especially... If I did like New Super Mario Bros. more, I put other games above it, like Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, for example. It's definitely a good 2D Mario game. It's not my personal favorite, but it's definitely good. Um, the controls are good. I just remember some of the levels were kind of annoying with like, the enemy placement. But it's pretty good. I liked it. Oh, the only thing I really remember that I didn't like is the very last level was way too long. It felt like it took an hour just to get through it. Damn. But that's about it. I'd put it, like, very top of A tier, I guess. Mm -hmm. Alright. I think that does average out to S tier, you lucky B-words. Yeah. Alright, All right. well... Uh, I think that's it. Right now. Yep, that is it for this uh, first half of the tier list because uh, 
much like the Mario Kart video, which that one was kind of like a little bit on the easy side to do because like it's just individual tracks. We're ranking entire games here. So next time, tomorrow, we're going to pick pick up where we left off and rank the rest of the Mario games from 2007 onward. Um, and we're going to have a lot more to talk about with them, uh, mostly. Um, so stay tuned for that tomorrow. And yeah, thank you guys a lot for watching this first part. And I believe we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Hey guys, thanks again for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, then consider leaving a like on the video and also subscribing to my channel. You should also check out the stuff my friends make. Uh, sorry, hang on. Eh. Uh, <clears throat> As I was saying, you should also check out the stuff my friends make. Those being Jordan Draws, Michael Game Show, Prism, and your local logo. I think you'll enjoy the stuff they make, and you might find me in some of that stuff as well. Their links to their channels or socials are in the description. And I think that's all I got, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers!